Thank you very much. My name is Mark Rulman. I'm a wealth advisor and I'm independent. I'm uh, pleased to say that uh, I'm free at last and uh, having a great time. Office set up at 6,000 Poplar, Suite 250. And my phone number is 800 2329. <laughs> Feel free to give me a call. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> we got the art park here. Hey. Art park, come on. I'll do it right here. Okay, good. Folks, as you know, we're just coming out of the uh, graduation season. If the kids are graduated, kick them out. Clean out their room. You need a dumpster for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clean out their room and make your man cave your tea shed today. How are you, folks? All right, dude. Come on, you got another insurance agent. You're happy to see we got a good work relationship with Liberty Mutual. They have them, James. Um, I should do a lot with uh, Joanne at their office. There's stuff that they do well that I should set up and vice versa. Um, I got Liberty Mutual. That, that's my main carrier, but I've also got nine other carriers depending on the situation. I can most times find a, a place for them, most times. Because every time we wouldn't be here, we'd be back in class and moving off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, the Liberty Mutual, I'm at uh, actually 6060 Poplar Avenue, right there across here from Crescent Center. Good, Good morning, I'm Karen Shea. Um, I'm free at last as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fee-only financial planner. I have nothing to sell. I have no ties to any companies. And uh, I am free to give you uh, advice that is independent and hopefully worthwhile. I have 40 years in the business. Um, I just have hot off the press an article in the best times about financial elder abuse. So I happen to have a few copies. And uh, if you're interested, uh, let me thank you, Karen Shay. Karen, good to have you here. Thank you very much. Well, you want to stand up? You're, you're next in line, so. Joe Rojas, I do real estate closings. And you have great experience. Great service and a lot of flexibility. Here's a call for your next real estate, uh, commercial or residential transaction. Quality title group. Thanks. You know what? I, what I like, and I, I think Joe does this, or Joe, you may be doing it, is when they have a closing, you will see the picture of the buyer. I think that's your deal. I think it's such a nice touch. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 And so anyway, I think you got Joe in there, and, and of course you got the buyers there, and the real estate agents, and now you're helping them along their road to home purchasing or something along that line. But that, it's a very nice picture, very attractive. Yeah. It's a pretty good touch. The only thing is we need to get an insurance agent in there, <laughs> which would really be good. So anyway, I think I covered that. Come on, we got CPA. You want to say a little something, please? Hi, my name, <coughs> my name is David Levine. I'm, um, I'm originally from Boston. I've been a CPA since uh, 1984. I'm also a road agent. And the one thing that makes me special, I think, is, is that I really like businesses. I look at small businesses. Most people see, don't know what a CPA does. To be frank, most CPAs don't really do what I think they should be doing, mm -hmm. which is basically telling businesses how to set themselves up and how to make money. You'd be amazed all the businesses I talk to in their CPA has not set them up right. Their accounting system makes no sense. They have no reports. They don't even have accounts. Thank you, David. David, thank you very much. You want to say something about uh, your uh, Baylor Christian Center and also you're selling tickets back there, aren't they? Aren't they a bargain price? Yes, they are a bargain what, price. What might those bargain prices be? Bargain price for one dollar, you get one ticket. But wait, for two dollars, you get three. <laughs> there you go. And what, 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 what do we do with all that money? This is the split the pot. So for any amount of money that is in here, half of it goes to you if you get the winning ticket, and half of it goes to the Neighborhood Christian Center which is where I work. I'm the Communications and Development Manager at NCC. And you'll see a few of these kind of scattered throughout. I have some more in my car if you'd like to take one with you. Um, it just kind of explains the services that we offer. We are rolling back into the school year. We are looking for volunteers to help with after school reading um, and some of our events. And as many of you know, Talk Shop helps support a Christmas party that we have upcoming in December, which believe it or not, we are already planning for. So. Um, as you guys are just kind of thinking about just moving into this school year season and the Christmas season, keep us in mind. We would love to have you partner with us, not only monetarily, but just come volunteer, come be a part of what we do in the city of this. So, thank you. Oh, look at the money coming out. Oh, well, we got money. Well, would you like to stand up and say anything? Not today. 
No, I think that's my favorite thing. So I thought you were going to buy her. She might come up there. Well, honey, uh, you're going to do the introduction. I think we covered everybody. Uh, now we get to hear from this gentleman. You know, every Tuesday before the guest speaker comes on Wednesday, I ask for a bio. Sometimes they're a mile long, sometimes they're short and sweet. And Robert gave me a challenge. He gave me four things, five things, that he's very proud of. So I'm just going to read you the list, and this is Robert's bio. In order of importance, number one, he's an Eagle Scout. Number two, a UVA graduate. Very proud of that. Number three, he's a naval aviator. Number wow. four, 40 years plus in life insurance and estate planning. And number five is what he's doing right now. Three and a half years, the last three and a half years in specialized tax service. I tried desperately to get our CPA here because I think uh, it would be a very good match. Our CPA is excellent. She needs to meet Robert. So if you have a CPA that wasn't able to come today, um, I believe we're videotaping this and I'm going to make sure Jennifer Brown gets a copy of this. Let's give a round warm of applause for Robert Oates. Do I get 20 seconds before my 25 minutes? And he said, no, you get 25 minutes. And what I would have said if I had that 20 seconds was you have in front of you a card about dealerships and what we can do for dealerships, auto dealerships. Uh, on the other side of Anna there, the baskets, buckets, uh, are, there's some more literature that you can pick up and, and it talks about restaurants and hotels and uh, all kinds of businesses that we can do work for. I've got my old checklist here and I apologize for that. I did a 10 minute that I think uh, that uh, Greater Memphis that Eric was there for and uh, Lynn and, uh, Mark. and Mark was there for among others. Um, and I asked Joe about uh, the presentation the 10 minutes before, I mean after this thing, she said, well what you should have done is you should have showed them the results first to get, keep everybody's eyes from blazing over since you have a monotone voice. <laughs> uh, I, I will say that, uh, I will say that one of my heroes in history, as I'm sure yours, was Mark Twain, who said it's just far better to give the appearance of a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> so that in mind, I'm trying to be very uh, I've got a little checklist here and I apologize for that. Go to the end. Okay, there, there are three kinds of internal revenue codes which are basically gifts for business people that we're going to be talking about. There's three concepts for internal revenue codes we call them. And, and uh, I'm, I'm delighted that David Levine is here because we work closely with CPAs because they're the trusted financial advisors and business owners and we only deal with business owners, so I'm glad he's here. Um, Hiring tax incentives, uh, WOTC, uh, uh, that's what you're looking at here, and these are the results. I know you can't see this, but a funeral home in Michigan got back from the IRS $136,000. A manufacturer in Michigan, $740,000. A spinal care facility in Georgia, $338,000. Flip back to one, one slide. That's hiring incentives, and in our deal, we're showing $42,000, which is a $63,000 understatement of what this company really does for people. We love the way under promise and way over the limit. Cost segregation, which is accelerated commercial property depreciation. Except the segregation is to separate the personal property in this building from the structure itself, everything holding the building up. And, uh, in, in this example, as you're going to see, we had a $500,000 construction plus um, um, uh, five million plus uh, uh, four four and a half million plus five hundred thousand dollars in renovations, and all of it counted for the cost of three hundred seventy thousand dollars. Again, understated. That figure could be five hundred fifty thousand. Our fee on that is up to ten percent. 
Coney Island Restaurant in Michigan to $122,000, Manufacturer in Kentucky, $740,000, uh, General Practitioner in Massachusetts, uh, $147,000, one slide. Uh, these are the results that we're talking about. For our R&D study, it's based on payroll, and, and uh, manufacturers qualify for research and development tax credits, and then none of them, almost none of them think they do. The IRS thinks they do, and that's the important thing. What is your payroll last year? We we're showing $312,000 in this study that you can look at in a minute. Manufacturer in Michigan, $290,000. Another manufacturer in Michigan, $290,000. Uh, another manufacturer in Michigan, this obviously this company is based in Benton, Michigan, this small in Detroit, 1.1 million uh, go to go to the end. Now we're going to go through, uh, before I go into the presentation pro, which is what I did, how much time have we got? Um, you have 18 minutes. Oh, good. Um, the presentation pro that, that I went through in my 10 minutes a couple of months ago or several weeks ago at BNI Greater Memphis, um, that was the result we just looked at. We came up with a with a company that's made up of 16 doctors, owned by two of the doctors, and in and, and, and this medical slash manufacturing uh, company, uh, there's five uh, commercial property structures. There's three doctor's offices and one they also own an implant company, uh, a little known stat for Memphis is most of the medical implants and prosthetics and things of this type of, that are made in this country, Memphis is the second largest producer of big medical things. So, um, what we're trying to do is, is add manufacturing to what these doctors do so that we could include R&D tax credits in this. And I hope to get together with David and talk, talk to him about this some more later. Uh, we need a new slide. I got it. Okay, I, I got it to the next. Okay, the first question we ask, and I want you all to role play with me. Each of y'all is one of these two doctor owners, and we're asking these two doctors these questions to go through this <coughs> software program to show how what we can do for them in, in the form of cost reductions and, and tax credits and, ta and specialized tax incentives. Uh, my, my thing, my title on my BNI thing says life insurance. It should say tax credits. But anyway, so do you own any commercial property? Yes, they own four and a half million dollars worth, and they did half a million dollars worth of renova renovations. New slide. Are your property taxes thirty thousand dollars or more? Yes, last year back up. Last year there were one hundred seventy thousand, seven thousand. Next. Is your payroll $250,000 or more? Yes, the total payroll for the 16 doctors and the, and the manufacturing facility for these implants is $6 million. Did you have revenue before 2014? You can tell us why that question there. I have no idea if I said it did you. Anyway, new, new slide. How many new employees do you, or replacements do you hire each year? 35, next. You take credit card, yes. And the reason this number is so high, 13,900 in this illustration, which is all it is, based on the real company. Uh, the people that buy their implants, the hospitals and the doctor's offices that buy these implants from this manufacturing facility, almost all of them pay for them on a credit card, unswiped credit card. The reason is, is to double check their records. They pay them off every month, so there's no interest. And they have this added record, so yes, they take a lot of credit cards. Slide. Okay, it's a waste of recycling over $300 per month. With all the stuff they have, it's $9,500 a month. Slide. Did your workers not bring them over $40,000 a year? And I don't want to step on any insurance codes here, but uh, in this case, it's $350,000. Uh, are you self insured? No. Next, next slide. Okay, this is the result of this presentation pro. This is based on 20 years of hundreds of thousands of cases of algorithms, and, I, algorithms and I'll, I'll throw in one of the extra stats that's hard for me to believe and probably hard for y'all to believe. Never has any of our, has, have any of our analyses 
or our, our audits or studies been disallowed by the IRS for 20 years and hundreds of thousands of people. Earning incentives. If you multiply 35 new people every year by $1,200, uh, that's $42,000. The truth is, our algorithms show that we have averaged in excess of $3,000 per new hire, and so that number could be $105,000. That's where that $63,000 understatement came from. Waste and recycling is a small number. This is like a buffet. You take what you want and leave the rest. So that this can be huge for certain companies. Workers' comp premium reduction, we, we were able to bring it down by $52,500. Uh, there are two places where, where companies might be overcharged more than other places. Um, a workers' comp uh, premium reduction, a workers' comp and credit card merchant fee overpayments, that's a $135,000 we can save on right there. Those are two places we watch closely in the expense department. Payroll tax credit is research and development tax credit based on last year's payroll. It has $6 million. There's $312,000 coming back from the IRS. Property tax that we go in and, and renegotiate with the assessor and we say, look, the outfit down the street is the same size and you charge them a whole bunch less last year, fifty thousand dollars less for the property taxes. So we got them twenty nine six back on the <coughs> commercial property owners incentives. That's cost segregation. Twenty years ago, in nineteen ninety eight, some big hoteliers and other big business people went to the IRS and they said, "Look, y'all, y'all will not let us <coughs> depreciate our commercial properties in less than thirty nine years straight line, and that's not fair because a lot of what's in our buildings." It's personal property and should be depreciated over five years. So the IRS said, oh, like personal property, they said, oh, yeah, like what? And so they said, well, you know, floor treatments, wall treatments, ceiling treatments, appliances, HVAC. They gave them a long list and so on. And the IRS said, well, you might have a point. Let, let's recall this meeting in two weeks. We're going to talk about it and tell you what our verdict is on it. So they got together two weeks later, and the IRS said, you're exactly right. Everything on your list, including parking lots and landscaping and all the stuff that goes with these commercial buildings, is, is personal property. And we'll even throw in the wiring and the plumbing translation. Everything in this building that's not holding the building up is potentially personal property and can be depreciated over five years. What this translates to in plain English is we're showing uh, $370,000 uh, on a uh, on a five million dollar deal, the cost of the building was 4.5, and then they did half a million dollars in renovations. If all this has happened within the last 20 years, then, then it's feasible for us to do this study. Somewhere between $74,000 per million is coming back for a big empty warehouse. <coughs> for this office building, it might be as high as $110,000. 74,000 multiplied by 5 million is 370,000 dollars. That number could be 550,000. So this 800, $891,000 dollars that we're bringing back to them, in reality, after we do our next call with them, which, which is called a discovery call, and they've got all their, their real numbers together, like what their, their workers' comp premium really is, then we will refine this, and this number will go up considerably. Again, we understate and over-deliver this company. So, the kicker here is that this is all done on contingency. If we had a tagline, which I think we should have, it would be, let us spend our time to improve your bottom line. I don't know if that's a point or a <laughs> but, but, but that's what it should be. So, uh, we do not, uh, all our competitors charge by the hour and basically don't care whether they, they hit pay dirt or not. They, of course, they care about we get paid from what they get back. And, and, and like, like here, for, for cost sake, uh, commercial property owners to send, uh, we get up to 10%. I have never seen one of them that was more than seven, so it's up to, I've never seen them get 10% yet. So um, these are huge, manna from heaven, gifts from the IRS. Well hidden tax incentives, as I think the name was that, that Joe and them gave for this talk. Uh, they're so well hidden, they're, they're hidden in 70,000 pages of Internal Revenue Code. And if you find them, 
they might as well be written in Greek because they're written in IRS legalese and only other lawyers understand it. So, so we translate the Greek. We know where the, the, these things are and we translate the Greek. We bring back money in the form of expense reduction and tax credit. Uh, there's about 30 total things we do um, at this company. If somebody has a small bit of uh, restaurant chain and they want to look into franchise, we can help with franchise. If somebody's looking for a business, they can how to how to fill out their qualified retirement plan that's going to clean their clock when they turn 70 and a half and require minimum distribution to kick in. Question. If you were a farmer and we're all the farmers or have them in the family or know them in this farm part of the world, would you rather have the seed that you put in the ground in the spring tax or the crop that's many times larger coming out of the ground in the fall, which one would you rather have tax? Seed. 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 The IRS does not tax the seed. They tax the crop. And when you're 70 and a half, you probably don't need the, the requirement of distributions they're requiring you to take, so they tax the thing is, is, is a raw deal. So we have a way, we have ways in this company to bail people out qualified plans. So 401ks, IRAs, and uh, We free up a lot of money and, and let wealth planners like, like Karen and, and uh, Mark uh, have more money to work with than their clients. So uh, I got to look at my checklist here. Uh, seven minutes. Just about all business owners, I'm going to have time for questions afterwards. I might even know some of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> just about all business owners. How many of you are familiar with this? Uh, you're all business owners in one way or another. Just about all business owners want more profits, lower expenses, and overhead, and resulting in a better bottom line. Do you all mostly all agree with that? Would most of you all like to see that? Well, that's what we do. Uh, Zig said that money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. So, <laughs> If we agree with that, that's what we do. We improve people's bottom line and people, my friends, when I first showed them this three and a half years ago, they said, they said, they asked the question and then they answered the question. They said, can you do that? And they said, you can't do that. I said, well, I'll tell you what. It doesn't cost anything to find out because we do it all in contingency. There's a lot of work here. And we do it all in zip. And if we hit pay dirt and we help a company out, um, our fees and charges are very competitive with the rest of the world. So, um, if you know any CPAs, and that's one of the reasons I'm glad David is here, because he can tell you whether I'm telling the truth or not. <laughs> if you know any CPAs who have business clients, he's described himself as that kind of person. <coughs> what happened was, when Trump administration lowered taxes, they did away with most of the tax write-offs that we're familiar with in, in January of 2018. Everybody just about had a great 2018 business wise. Stock market did for three quarters and then fell out of bed in the fourth quarter. But business people made a lot of money in 2018. So April came around and they looked at their their their, their tax return thing and they said, Damn, I made a lot of money, but I haven't got any tax write off. Now they're they're up against the wall. There's two deadlines, September 15th. In the next three months, September 15th and October 15th, which is where the rubber meets the road. If these people have big tax bills and no write-offs, we can bail them out. We can save them. If they own buildings, if they hire people, if they make things like manufacturers, we can uh, bring. These are some of the few tax write-offs and, and credits that are available. Do, do you, have I confused everybody? Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, you want me to, why do I want me to leave? Right? <laughs> Go ahead. If, if the hiring tax incentives, uh, does that include hiring uh, employees 50 and older? It doesn't matter about the age. Here's what happened. In 1945, the IRS said, Mr. Employer, if you'll hire veterans, we'll give you a tax credit. And a tax credit is like dollar for dollar. If you owe the same dollar and you have a tax, dollar tax credit, you don't owe anything. So coming forward 75 years, whatever it is, since 1945. Uh, it, it, today, if you hire a veteran, and, and, and for that one WOTC, it's called Worker Opportunity Tax Credit. For that one tax credit, 
that's federal, there's a hundred state ones. So if you hire a veteran here in Memphis, Tennessee, or Nashville, or anywhere in Tennessee, that veteran's worth $9,600 either off your tax bill or a check coming from the thing. So if you hire a lot of veterans, you got a gold mine. If the same thing was happening in Georgia or Atlanta or anywhere in Georgia, then that same veteran would be worth $16,000 to you. So it depends on where you are, and we do them all. So WASI is a big thing. It's been very cumbersome and a big pain in you know what. For decades, and, and our, the IRS made mail stuff to the state capitol, and, and then, then mail stuff back, and they wouldn't let you fax or email, and, you know, or any of that stuff. And so finally we got them to join the 20, First century, and, and um, we have streamlined this. It used to be a rule that still is a 28-day deadline. If you were getting ready to hire somebody tomorrow, you can have only 28 days to find out what they qualify for. If they live in a bad neighborhood, if they're new hires working for a $5,500 a pop. But, you know, there's all kinds of sta levels and stages in here. And so, um, anyway, so what happens is, you know, the, the we have streamlined it and made it so that somewhere between three minutes and three hours from the time 10 people apply for two jobs, we're going to give you an answer on every one of them, how much they're worth to you, which all things being equal, you're going to take the one with the biggest tax credit. Anyway, any other questions? Uh, yeah, the example that you've shown is a manual manufacturing plant. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking. I'm wondering for like attorneys' offices, doctors' offices, people who rent their property. Any, are there different sorts of things that you can? The people that rent, if they do renovations to a property, they can get they can get cost saved. But mostly, cost saved is segregating the real from the personal property, and and that's for business. That's for commercial property owners. It doesn't matter what kind or what age they are. You know, apartment buildings, warehouses. Office so building. if they don't own the office building that they work in, the savings are minimal? Absolutely minimal. But, but the, the, there's, a, there's a couple of rules here that I didn't know. If they've owned the, the building for more than 20 years, it's not worth anybody's time when more than half the depreciation is already gone. And, and uh, if, if, if the building is worth less than $500,000, it's not worth it. Time. So it needs to be at least a half million dollar commercial building and, and uh, owned for 20 years or less. So, so a, a, say an attorney who rents office space is not worth it? Wouldn't work for him. Okay. <clears throat> but that same attorney probably knows a ton of people. Robert, do you have a minimum threshold as part of the business that you're asking you need to help? Other well, than the 20 years, other than the, the, the value of business, is there a... Well, the, the this will work for mom and pop businesses, it'll work for funeral homes, it'll work for businesses, up, flower shops, it'll work for different people. So if you have a small business and you say, look, I've got a check for $50,000 made after you from the IRS, do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's a small business worth about payroll next month, $50,000 is a mountain of money. If it's a big business and you're talking about $6 million, yeah. You know, all relative. Do you want me to shut up? No, actually, because we got uh, an earlier start, you have more time if you have more questions out here. Well, uh, Trevor's got his hand up, and I want to talk to him too, but I mean, I, I have to be in South Haven by 11 o'clock, so I'm going to stay as long as I can. It's going to take me 30 minutes to get there. What, what is it, Trevor? So, in my Memphis Rotary Club, one of my uh, members of that club is the GM, the buck stops to attend one of the Chevy dealerships here in the Methodist area, and he reports directly to the owner. Is any of your service can help them? General, are you saying General Motors? He's a, he's a, he's a GM over all, one of the Chevy dealerships here. He's the buck yeah, stops right there. Of course, now let me just, let me just hit on that slide. <laughs> yeah. You'll notice if you drive up Covington, I mean, down Covington Pike, every other, it seems to me like, of those automobile yeah. dealerships where they're getting a new shop, a new showroom floor, a new, they're getting a new something. They're yeah. Cosmetic facelift, if nothing else, that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Every one of those renovations is gets some, some cost yeah. taking money back. And the reason they have to do it is because the manufacturers make them do it. So that's why you see this going on all the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's in Bartlett, so there's no other dealers around. All right, I would much. love to meet him. If you have, if you, are you friends with him? 
Yeah, I'm about to have lunch with him this week. Okay, well, I'm going to invite myself to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear anything about picking up a tab. No, no, no. <laughs> now you, if you pick up my tab, I, that's right, you get out of here. <laughs> so if I pick up the tab, you can bring a whole bunch of, of your friends. I go to Texas or Brazil and bring a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else do we need to do? Well, let's uh, give a round of applause for Robert. <laughs> Everybody thoroughly confused. That was my mission. No, I don't. Very simple. Call Robert. There you go. There you go. Well, listen, this lady, she did not want to talk at one, but she now she got 20 extra seconds. Come on, Eric. Oh, oh, can we get Eric back up to do a, to video Eric's 20 second, uh, one minute also? Sure. Because Trevor did not video huh? it, so. Oh, he's sure. Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. All right. Come on up and get, get up there and say she's out of something she wanted to say. Yes. I'm a retired dentist, Dr. Susan Kurtz, from the hospital in came to the United States. Reason she I uh, love volunteering in different um, venues. This is one of them. I wore this t-shirt. <laughs> Eight Days of Hope. They're based out of Tupelo. Steve Tabor is the president. Uh, he now has moved to, they got a lease in D uh, Buffalo for one dollar from the government for a warehouse, so that's where they're putting all their supplies and stuff. So I just want to give a plug for um, disaster relief. It's like Samaritan's Purse, like a Franklin Graham Samaritan's Purse. There, uh, I did a first response in Opelika, Alabama, when all the tornadoes went through in March. And there's nothing like volunteering. And everybody goes there on their own dime. But when you get there, they feed you, they house you. Well, yeah, yeah, you have to bring your sleeping bag. You can sleep in a church in a Sunday school room, but you've got a comfortable bed at home. So why not? Go for a week. If you can't go, donate. Because they need, they need money to help people who've lost everything. Everything. When their tornado goes through, everything's lost. So, I can't donate because I don't work outside of the home anymore. My husband does, and uh, yeah. well, you donate it. by volunteer. I donate my time, and there's nothing more valuable mm -hmm. than your time. Yes. So my kids are now in college. One of them is out. She's in the working world. I'm free. <laughs> I'm a free agent. Wait, so, well Every time I come up to her, it's, uh, yes, Pat, please. Um, speaking of hope, there is a, an auction uh, this Saturday at a spaghetti dinner for Tales of Hope, please, Animal Rescue. And it's at, I'm going to have to look up where it is. I know it's on Walnut Road, but um, they, they have a silent auction. I always end up with stuff every year because they have good stuff. Okay. So good. if you'd like to go, four to seven this Saturday. Is there a cost when you donate $25 or something to attend? Is there what? Yeah. 10 costs when you take it to get in? There is, and I don't remember it. It might okay. be $10. Right. I'm looking it up okay. now. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Know. We got a motivational moment. Though. I wasn't sure if we had time or not, so I did want to share this. Robert, with you I guys. thought you did a great job. I think everybody knows somebody yes. that they can at least hand to you, so thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. You did a great job. I'm so glad you, he could come. I had done a one on one with Robert, and I heard that, and I'm like, man, we got to get you to talk shop. Well, I just want to share a quick motivational moment from what's on your top 10 list, this book. And it says, What will tomorrow bring? You, you, get to you get to decide. Lots of people get up in the morning and live out their day. Then they go home at night and think about what happened and how they feel about it and all of that. But tonight, try something different. Just before your head hits the pillow, visualize the kind of day you want to have for yourself when you wake up. Not just the routine things but also a few audacious surprises. Turn the list over to your subconscious and sleep on it, knowing that whatever you've imagined for tomorrow can and probably will happen. And if you like what happens the first day, continue your new nightly routine for a week or two. 
by then you will definitely have something new to think about. And this come, this is a quote uh, from Guatama. It says, "With our thoughts, we make the world." <coughs> so, advertisers, supporters, and sponsors at ten fifteen, we're going to be doing the power of the new LinkedIn and how to promote your business. Good. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, all right, folks. I thought that this is. Yeah. Is it Saint Agnes? Saint Agnes. Okay, on uh, Walnut Grove. Okay, great, great. Susan, real quick. Susan, come on up. Wait, let's get this girl. This she donates this room, folks. So anyway, we want to thank her again. Thank you, everyone. My name is Susan Martin. I own Pino's Palette here in Cordova, where we like to paint, drink, and have fun. Uh, we do private parties. We do public classes. We have an artist who stands on stage, walks you step by step through a painting. Bring your wine, beer, your tea, whatever you like. You can bring food. We supply everything else. Uh, right now we're just uh, looking, I know it's kind of early, but we got to start early, thinking about those holiday parties, okay? One other thing I want to mention is that we do rent the space out without painting. So if you're looking for a venue just to come in and, and transform with tables and chairs and a band or a DJ, we do rent the space out for that also. So thank you, everyone. She's been a, a great hostess, I'll say that, to allow us to come in here and uh, occupy this building every Wednesday morning. Well, uh, we're going to go back there, and uh, Robert, what are you giving away, if, if anything? Uh, well, I, let me expand upon that just a little bit. I'm giving away a $10 gift certificate uh, to Starbucks, but if the winner can wait, I've got a couple of these on the way. Oh, great. They can grow rich. Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill, the, the, uh, this is the, the printing that came out 10 years ago. It was the first one, it was in 1937. So they talk about the crash of uh, 08 and cell phones. And so well, this is not completely out of date like the original one. But if you get this book and if you read this book, it will change your life. And so I will trade whoever wins that card, that, that Starbucks thing. For this book, but I'm waiting on them to come. Okay, out. so you got you get a chance to win a uh, Starbuck or a book, yes. So anyway, uh, everybody's got a card in there. We're working on it. Working on it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> over here coffee. Donuts, low cal, high protein, good for the skin. Donuts, isn't that right, Susan? Yeah. Energy food. Energy food, yes. <laughs> okay, my wife's going around collecting yeah. things. Anna, we got a tally yet? How much we're going to have to okay. split the pot? Thank you all for donating. We have $24 in the pot. $24. Somebody is going to walk home with 12 bucks. That's a pretty good tally. There we, Anna, we got to get you to come out here a little more time. You get yeah. more money. You're squeezing your name blood out of a turnip. So. <laughs> uh, um, but I have the ticket. You want me to read it all? Uh, yes, here's the winner. Uh, give me the, yeah, the winner. All right. Hey, let's give her a drum while here. We got $12. Hey, okay, Anna, go. Okay. Nine seven zero. Four oh eight nine Marcos. All right, twelve dollars. Let it ride. All right, we're gonna donate all of it back to uh, Neighborhood Christian Center. I know Adam wants to give you a person. Adam, go over and shake his hand. Say thank you for the donation. Wait a minute, I get the hug. Wait a minute. Ah, all right, folks. Well, good. Um, let's go ahead and draw a card now, Robert. Please, you're gonna draw somebody's name out of there. Reach in there deep, shake it up. Here we go, and the winner is Pat again. She wins all the time. Pat Dolce. How many cards do you have in there? Pat? I know she she wants to be stacking the cards. Well, I thought this was an exceptional group, and I must admit, here with the doctor being in the house out there, she said, well, "I just don't want to talk." And, you know, kind of a little on the shy side, but you came through loud and clear, girl. I'm very proud of you out there. Thanks for your volunteer. It certainly makes a difference. Well, folks, as I say every Wednesday after uh, Talk Shop is concluded, James, good to see you here. Karen, good to see you here. We've got some new folks. So, And uh, David came in here. I haven't seen him a lot of times. So as I say every Wednesday after uh, after uh, class is over, class is now dismissed.